So the new field's taking root. The field of plastic and reconstructive surgery, we sort of have a grip on it because it, it, the anatomy is so varied. You're, you're dealing with the nasal passages. You're dealing with a brow lift area. Uh, and then you're also dealing with peripheral nerves, which is uh, naturally a part of plastic surgery in the back of the neck. So it's, it's, it's natural that you know, a neurosurgeon would, would, would consider doing the back of the neck, I would think. Uh, maybe some peripheral nerve orthopedists. Um, an ENT surgeon, head and neck surgeon, could probably do most of them. They might not feel as comfortable going in the back of the neck, but there probably are some. And actually, at the, at the symposium, there were ENTs there. There was at least one from New York that, uh, at the last symposium we had. Case Western Reserve is uh, where it all started, now called University Hospitals in Cleveland. The Cleveland Clinic Headache Center, where Dr. Kriegler is now, they're in support of it. Um, uh, otherwise, there's a, there's a paucity of neurologists that I think have jumped on the bandwagon, but I think it, it, it is growing. The two symposium we've talked about, we went from five surgeons, because at the symposium there was five of us guest lecturers there, including Dr. Guyron, and we trained 50 new surgeons two years ago, and I think 60 or so last year, some of which were from overseas. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time before they, uh, they, they start gathering up some numbers uh, of significance. The gentleman in, in Georgetown, Dr. Dusik, Yvonne, on Dusik, he didn't train with Dr. Guyron, and he's done probably 300 in the last two or three years because he has eight neurologists there that are that are all you know referring to him, and he's part of the university, and they put him on this website, and so they it's a um, he's done really well, and he actually has done some uh, work looking at local anesthetics and steroids. Um, I just don't think it's as accurate as the Botox, personally. Insurance coverage is a huge pain here, but it seems to be less of a pain in the bigger cities, and uh, I, I, why, I can't explain it. Um, just can't explain it. Um, there, we've had some acceptances uh, in, in, Can there's, in, in Kansas, major carriers in Ohio, uh, New York, uh, Aetna, CBA, Cigna of New York and of Maine has paid uh, here. Um, Aetna, his, his, uh, they frequently deny, but they have also uh, uh, paid f um, for some of the surgery, uh, but not Anthem. Um, what does it mean for the future? Another treatment option other than drug treatment. Um, the ner treatment of nerve, nerve impingements in sites one through three and uh, in the nose of the vibratory stimuli. Uh, basically, like I've said, it's for moderate to severe patients. It's for non-responders to medications or for those who are intolerant to the medications or for those who are fearful of medications that have been out for five or six years, you know, and not knowing what, what ramifications they may have in, in 10 or 15 years of dependence. The medical treatments, especially abortive treatments, are still a mainstay for the majority of patients. Uh, basically, this is what we tell the surgeons: don't diagnose or treat headaches medically. Uh, we just, I just don't do it. I try to. I, I don't see a patient unless they've seen a, been seen by a neurologist. I wish I had Debbie here, <laughs> or another neurologist that was really, uh, you know, involved and really wanted to go after m uh, migraine disease. Um, but I've been getting growing support from the local neurologists. Uh, we've got the surgeons have to know about medication overuse headache. Uh, they need to be followed by neurologists. The collaboration is really important, and Dr. Guyron and Dr. Reed have a, a, a great collaborative relationship there, uh, as well as Dr. Kriegler at the Cleveland Clinic, who apparently still sends patients to the competing hospital where Dr. Guyron works, uh, university. They need to learn the, uh, the, the Botox injection technique is very important, and they need to be persistent. Pearls for the non-surgical providers, they have, need to be open-minded. They need to learn the anatomic block technique. Um, if patients' headaches get worse after the injection, that's probably a good sign. If um, positive, positive test, and positive. Oh, and then obviously, if if the the symptoms get better, then that's also a good sign. Um, and also, stay open-minded and consider Botox and surgical treatment for other patients, like cluster patients that we've had some good results with. That's it.